Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to my channel for another Caustic Plastic 1-6 scale classic cinema icon figure unboxing and review. Now today we are taking a look at none other than Bela Lugosi as Dracula. Now I do have to say a huge thank you to Caustic Plastic for sending me this production sample. I have popped the link to their website in the description below. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button so you're notified as soon as a brand new review goes live on the channel. As for the box art, it's suitably classy. We've got this smoke plume in the center with some bats flying around up top. Bela Lugosi as Dracula. The same thing on the side of the box on a red background with more bats down below. On the back, a bunch of logos, a printed signature, and of course, all the legal info. Now, if you slide off the top cover, you are treated to a preview of the figure inside. But you all know, we're not here for previews, we're here to review the figure itself. Now there are multiple different versions of Dracula, which we will discuss in just a second. First in hand impressions though, yeah, they're pretty good. What we are going to do now though, is unbox just one more thing. And that's of course Dracula's Coffin. It comes in its own box and it has some really nice artwork. On one side, an image of Dracula emerging from his coffin, a tombstone in the background, plus of course a bunch of bats. More bats are always required when it comes to Dracula. On the side, Dracula's Coffin, Deluxe Edition Polystone Accessory. Then on the back, Bela Lugosi as Dracula. On the inside, a big hunk of foam and of course the coffin itself. Now I'm really curious to see how Dracula fits in here, if he actually does, and what the heck this thing looks and feels like in hand. First impressions, just like Dracula himself, are pretty good. What we are going to do now though is get all of the accessories that come with Dracula out here and Take a closer look at everything he comes with. Starting off with the display base first, it's pretty simple. It's round, relatively small in footprint, but quite tall. Up front, Bela Lugosi's signature fully sculpted in and painted beautifully. There's this metallic gold finish with some shading around the edges, plus a wash in the crevices, so, you know, you can actually see his signature. Up top, it's flat. And there's a 2D print of a cobblestone path in black and white. Now you may be thinking, Justin, it's flat. How does the figure actually attach to the display base without a crotch grabber? Well, I'm glad you asked. There are magnets inside the base and inside the figure's feet. So when he's standing on here, he magnetizes in position. I am all for that. I love magnets in my bases. On the underside, it has all of the various caustic plastic branding, and as you can see, it's designed in Italy. When it comes to head sculpts, we get two of them. One with a neutral expression, and one that's an evil grin. My personal preference is actually this one. I think the likeness is there. I like the raised eyebrow. His interest is peaked just a little. The skin texture isn't only painted, it's sculpted as well. And... It looks really good. You've got multiple freckles, the hair is kind of slicked back and slightly glossy, but unfortunately, as you can see, there's a visible seam line all along the top. And yeah, that's a little ugly. You do have a neck connector for each head sculpt, not something that's super new and notable, but with previous caustic figures, you had to switch this neck connector between both sculpts. Really annoying, but thankfully a non-issue for Dracula. Now, the grinning head sculpt, not my favourite, because he doesn't actually have any teeth inside his mouth. Kind of a weird choice, seeing as though this is Dracula and Bela Lugosi did have teeth. But in the right pose, looking down, oh yes, this could work quite well. Now, do let me know which head sculpt you prefer down in the comments below. One of the neatest accessories is this right here. It's a candle on a candlestick, in and of itself pretty simple. The little candle holder is made of rubbery plastic, so no worries about snapping any of these pieces off. They would otherwise be very fragile. And it's painted well. It's slightly metallic, there's a patina and wash over the top, 
but up top you've not only got a candle, but some pillow stuffing so it looks like the candle is burning. I love that, there's also some orange shading so it looks like a flame, this is awesome. It's the small things like this that set figures from caustic plastic over the top. At the end of the day, it's different strokes for different folks. Some of you, I'm sure, won't like the pillow stuffing, but I genuinely do. Now, the hands come in a couple of different styles. The D Dracula ring is on the left side. Some have long fingernails that are a little prickly, and they are glossy. There is skin texture on the hands. There's some shading for the vein work and the knuckles. Yeah. Caustic plastics still, in my opinion, have the best hands in the business. What we are going to do now, though, is get Dracula himself out here. Standing straight up and down in the light box, no crazy poses or accessories or anything like that. Although I have popped the cape on just to complete the overall look. And what a difference that little pop of red makes on an otherwise very black and white figure. The red is slightly metallic and reflective. As I said, it makes a huge difference, at least for me. Plus, the drape is really good. It's this heavyweight fabric that just kind of pulls it down and hugs the body. It attaches in a rather interesting way, and we will discuss that, don't you worry, in just a second. But the tailoring is on point. It hugs the body in all the right places. That coupled with the body that has really good proportions. Yeah. He looks suitably realistic. Up close and personal, kicking things off with the head sculpt first. I'm not gonna lie, I still don't like this head sculpt. I think the other one is way better. The neck is about the right size. It does look a little long from certain angles, but when you bring the collar around, that is fully wired and poseable. Yeah everything starts to look a little neater and tidier. Now, don't forget all of this is fabric, so you can adjust the collars here and there if you want the neck to be a little bit shorter. Because, as I said, from certain angles, it looks slightly long. I don't want to sound like I'm bashing the figure. I don't mean to. I really like it. It's just that from certain angles, yeah, the neck can be a little long. Now, once you tidy everything up, like I said before, it looks incredible. This head sculpt is my preference. It fits in the same way as the other one, and don't forget, once you pop it on, yeah, you'll have to do a little futzing. When it comes to the cape, I love the two-ply finish with the black on the outside and the red satin on the inside. A pop of colour is always welcome. It's also nice and heavy, so like I said earlier, the drape is spectacular. You also have a fully wired collar. Then the way it attaches is via these strings underneath his arms. You kind of tie it around the back, it cinches everything in. And it doesn't ride forward, it doesn't ride back, it sits in position. This is a pretty simple mechanism, but it works well. He is wearing multiple layers with the white shirt, the folded collar, the silver buttons that aren't real buttons, they're just glued on top, but they look good. A satin style white bow tie with the satin vest and a real metal chain along the bottom. You also have a jacket. But the coolest part is it's wired. Completely unnecessary, but that means you can have it hug the body even tighter and make the tailoring look even more bespoke, if that was even possible. Around the back, you do have the coattails. There's a pleat in them, and no, unfortunately, these aren't wired. I would have loved to have seen that, but wires around the front are still really welcome. Moving down to the pants, they are the same black fabric as the jacket. You've got this pleat down the front, and they fit the body well. You also have this shiny black stripe running all the way down from top to bottom. Then the shoes are unpainted black plastic. The sculpt is good, the details are crisp, and oh yes, you have real fabric laces. Completely unnecessary, but you all know I love to see it. On the underside, no tread, but you do have some stitching sculpted in, as well as the nail holes for where the soles would be nailed in. As you would expect, being a 1-6 scale coffin, yeah, it's pretty big. It's also really heavy because this is polystone. On the underside, we've got some black velvet, so it's nice and grippy and shouldn't slide around too much in the display. Overall, 
I think it looks really good. It's also painted beautifully, you've got multiple layers of paint with washers in the crevices, and the sculpt is crispy. We've got texture, we've got wood grain, it looks like wood, but trust me, it isn't, it's all polystone. Now on the inside, the bed section looks like it would be fabric, but it isn't, this is also fully sculpted. That is fine with me, because that means when you pop Dracula inside, everything is perfectly moulded to the shape of him. He should slot in there like a glove. You also have some real metal hardware, which is strong enough to hold the door open, even though, as I said, this door is really heavy. For a quick side-by-side -side comparison, here we have Caustic Plastics Dracula and Caustic Plastics John Wayne. They both are completely different sizes, completely different builds, and that tells me that Caustic Plastic really cares about accuracy. They want to make sure the bodies are accurate to the characters they're making in 1-6 scale, and if that means making a brand new custom body, then yeah, they're gonna get that done. As you can see, John Wayne is huge. Now, I don't know if a lot of companies would be using custom bodies, but I appreciate the effort. And fingers crossed going forward, they keep that going. If you were wondering if Dracula can actually go in the coffin, even though I said he could earlier, yes, he absolutely can. He fits in no problem whatsoever. He's not too tall, he's not too short. He fills out the entire coffin and it's specifically sculpted to accommodate this very figure. Now, if you adjust the pose and pop his arms down, yes, you can absolutely close it then you'd be hiding the figure entirely, and it would kind of become Schrodinger's Dracula. Wrapping up on the Caustic Plastic 1-6 scale Bela Lugosi Dracula. Going into this, I was pretty excited, I'm a huge fan of Caustic Plastic, and yeah, this looked like a pretty good figure. But I told Caustic Plastic, hey, if you're thinking about sending me Dracula, don't worry about it, I don't know anything about him, there's no need, and they said, no, 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 we're gonna send him because we think it's our best figure ever. And they were right. From a technical perspective, just ignoring the character aspect, this is super classy. Starting off with the display base, it's magnetic. You all know I love magnetic display bases. The body is well proportioned and the outfit is super high quality. I love the fabrics here, especially the cape with that bright red interior. And the way it attaches under his arms, it looks just a little bit more seamless rather than having this big honk and clasp, or maybe even press studs on the shoulders. This, in my opinion, is the cleanest way of attaching a cape that I have seen in a while. Now the head sculpts, I think one is better than the other. I don't like the toothless one, it looks kind of funky. But the stoic expression is absolutely awesome. I love the paint applications and it fits just right on the body, it's not too big, it's not too small. As I said before, the proportions are super realistic. Now if you get the deluxe version you get this massive honking coffin, not everyone's going to have room to display the coffin, but if you do, it's a very nice kind of scene setting diorama piece, but just be aware it is very heavy. So if you have some heavy figures on the display with it, then I would be just a little bit more careful. So, at the end of the review, can I honestly say that I'm impressed, knowing nothing about Dracula? Yeah, I am. This is now my favourite caustic plastic figure, even though I'm a Dracula noob. Now I have popped the link to Caustic Plastics website in the description below. While you're down there, why not hit that subscribe, bell notification icon and join button if you like the sound of seeing your name in the end credits of my reviews. Like, comment and subscribe and we'll catch you in the next video.